we're next to an asphalt plant or that's down the street from us. So trucks may go by back and forth. Hopefully this microphone will knock a lot of that out. We're going to see how it goes though. Uh, I don't expect a big crowd today. Hence, not much turnout so far. And hopefully that's because everybody's getting ready for the 4th of July uh, and they've got jobs they're working. So that's all good stuff. What's up guys? Christian here with River Pools. Today we are talking about uh, how to take better pictures and video uh, for your pool company. This is a talk I gave, presentation I gave at Atlantic City in February. When was that? Was it February? January, in January. And um, got some good feedback from it. So we're going to take that presentation, which was designed to be like an hour and a half long, and we're going to scale that down to about 45 minutes. So you're going to see me skip over some slides. Um, if I skip over something that you would be interested in learning more about, shoot me an email, let me know for sure, and we can get connected. And uh, we can hop on a, on a Zoom call if you want and go over that in more depth. But I'm going to focus on talking a little bit about gear. We're going to talk a little bit about how to edit. We're going to talk about uh, costs for gear and how to do this if you're just getting started. So hopefully there's some good takeaways. Let me pull up my presentation here. And we're going to share the PowerPoint. You may also hear a few folks talking in the background um, as we get going. We've got some customers out here at the pool park, which is good stuff. All right. So we're going to start from the beginning. All right. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about capturing. We're going to talk about editing. And we're going to talk about sharing. So we're going to cover the spectrum from the gear, the cost, um, how to get all those photographs and video edited, uh, and then where to share them and some tips and tricks along the way. Okay. All right, I'm going to start at the top. We're going to talk about gear, and uh, I'm going to run through the different types of devices that are commonly out there for you. So uh, first up would be the action camera. This Everybody knows about GoPro, and there are other models or other brands that are coming out with action camera gear. Um, so, but GoPro is the most commonly recognized. DJI now has one, but everyone's, everyone's heard of GoPro. Then you have your standard point and shoot, which is what everyone had uh, about seven to 10 years ago. And your standard camcorder, which are still in use today. You've got your DSLR camera. And the difference between uh, the camcorder and the point and shoot is that the DSLR, you can change the lenses on. You can do photography and videography through them, and they're a little more versatile. And then I, I hit the button a little early over here to the cinema camera, um, and these things are out of, out of our price range for sure. We're talking at least $50,000 by the time you really get the camera set up with all the accessories you need. So what about the cell phone? I left that one out. And I did so intentionally because it really, over the last several years, has become the most universal tool in our capturing uh, toolbox. And we find that this device, the cell phone, really takes place of the point-shoot camera and the camcorder because the lenses are so advanced, the processors in them are so advanced, the, the sensors are so advanced, they just do a phenomenal job all around getting a lot of things done. Um, the, uh, the action cameras, the GoPros, are really good because they're waterproof. They can go into small places. The lenses uh, shoot in a really wide angle, so you catch, you catch those, um, those moments that are, that are just hard to get with any other device. And we're shooting right now on a DSLR, uh, the one that you see right here. That exact camera is what we're shooting with now. So these are the three devices that we use on the regular. Um, if you watch two minutes in the pool, you'll see that we have a primary camera angle that I'm speaking to, and that's done with this DSLR camera. And then the second angle, you'll see that we cut to all the time, uh, seemingly like the camera's right on the desk. That's actually shot with a GoPro and then sometimes a cell phone. But, you know, we really use the cell phone a lot, a lot. Every single day we're using the cell phone to get uh, website worthy images of pools and job sites and different details and things like that. So this is probably the cell phone is probably the most robust tool you can have and it's capable of far more than you think. I'm going to show you guys in a little bit just what you can do capture wise and edit wise right from your cell phone. All right, so let's go into about let's go talk about action cameras. Let's talk about the GoPro and use cases here. 
All right, so we use the GoPro uh, more to capture video clips than we do shooting entire videos or, and we've done some photography with it, but mostly for time lapses and hyperlapse. And so hyperlapse is what you see here and it's, it's the video form of a time lapse. So time lapse are images taken every in intervals that you select and then you piece them together, right? To tell everybody knows what a time lapse is. But then a hyperlapse is just done. It's the video version of that. And so we wanted to um, we wanted to hook a GoPro up to the truck on the way to the job site one day, and uh, just capture a clip of us heading out while the sun is rising. And we stuck it next to the American flag, which you can see right here on the side of the excavator. Uh, and it just got this really cool moment. Uh, this was a uh, this was a video uh, that we sped up to appear to be a time lapse or hyperlapse, but just a beautiful sunny day uh, and the clouds are rolling by out here at the pool park. And again, the, the GoPro is just so versatile. But you see what the GoPro does. This column, right, is slightly bowed a little bit. So the GoPro is going to do that, which gives it a cool look, but it doesn't necessarily capture the detail um, of something if you're trying to photograph it. They are rugged. They are capable of doing a lot. This is the GoPro Hero 4, which we have a set of. I think we have four or five of them. Um, the newer versions, the GoPro 7s, I think that they sell rugged cases for them. I, I wouldn't go dumping it into or putting it into a muddy situation, but it is capable of being waterproof and can go underwater and be just fine. The previous models, Hero 4 and, and under, um, all come with the cases, and those cases can withstand a lot. This uh, camera actually got a load of stone dumped on it and we had to go in and dig it out and the camera was just fine. But it got a really cool clip of the stone which we all use in construction and backfilling uh, to help us tell a story. Uh, another good case, again, catching a time lapse of an install and we just strapped this thing to a flexible uh, tripod stand and, and wrapped that around the stake here at the job site, hit record, and then we've got a video clip that we can use for time lapse later. And we also use it for second angles which we talked about it just gives a different look all right another quick time lapse here's an example here we uh we screwed a gopro to the wall in the manufacturing plant to capture the build process of the t40 when we were building the mold for that and it took us how long amy did that take us three months just shy of three months to build that mold and we just you know every two weeks i would go and i would swap out the sd card and I think I took one photo every 10 minutes for three months, and it ran around the clock. There's one period of time where the, uh, the cord came unplugged, and so I lost about a day or two's worth. Um, but other than that, I mean, it really helps you tell a really cool tale. This stuff does phenomenal on social media, these time-lapse images. People, um, people like to see them. They're very engaging right out of the gate. And with devices like GoPros, which now interface – you know, with your phones through, uh, through Wi-Fi, you can grab clips and bring them over very easily. So incredibly versatile tools. And, you know, they're not very expensive now. We also used it to capture this moment of just a pool filling, getting filled up at the job site. And I don't know if anybody can hear that or not, but uh, we just set the camera at the bottom of the pool. We let the pool get filled with water. And then we just stuck a fun little message in there that we hand wrote on a piece of uh, foam. You know, Nick and Louise, hope you have fun in your new pool. So engaging stuff, very quick, very easy to capture with a cheap device, very easy to edit on a mobile device. And we'll show you how to do that in a minute. All right, the DSLR cameras, you'll, you'll hear the terms DSLR or mirrorless. And it just has to do with how the inner workings of the camera are set up. So this happens to be a mirrorless camera. It captures the images digitally as opposed to bouncing the image off of a mirror and then picking it up with the sensor that way. So um, this, is, this is how images look uh, through a DSLR camera. And again, this is shot using the Sony that we just saw a picture of, but it looks good. So the color range is far greater with a camera like this. And um, if, if you wanna really be able to enhance the color especially around pools. There's lots of landscaping, lots of colors on the pool and the tile and different things like that. That camera can really deliver um, high, level, high level photography and videography. And they also have things like um, autofocus and different features like that, which you just saw an example of, of that fade 
from out of focus to focus on that word that was just up on the screen. All right. Let's back up now. Uh, this picture was captured with a DSLR camera. Uh, this was a shot that Patrick got um, just last year and um, one of our jobs in Williamsburg, Virginia. And um, he, the DSLR, the mirrorless cameras are really good at capturing images with low light. So in the evening time at dusk, uh, when the sun is setting or has just set and you've got all the landscape lights set up or there's a fire in the background in a little fire pit, these types of cameras allow you to get images um, in much more versatile situations than you would say with an iPhone. So there's an example there of what that camera can do. You can also control the shutter speed. Um, again, allowing you to photograph after dark. So slowing the shutter speed down lets more light come into the camera and capture the image onto the sensor. And you can tell the shutter speed is slowed down because the water looks blurry. So it just took a lot longer to actually snap the photograph here, allowing more light to come in and allow these, some of these other lit features to appear in the camera. So it gives a waterfall kind of that blurry look. Um, looks pretty neat. And then of course you can focus in really well on water drops coming down off the cascade. So the, the DSLR is a very, very versatile camera. And this was a certainly a, um, just a killer shot we got. We also can take the same shot with a cell phone actually and then edit. And I'm gonna show you how to edit this particular photograph on a cell phone in just a little bit. So the DSLR camera is a, an incredibly versatile tool as well. It becomes more costly because you have to buy different lenses to achieve different things. And then of course there's a learning curve with the DSLR, um, how to use all of its settings, what types of lenses do what, um, different attachments for lenses. So there's a learning curve there, but it's not insurmountable. You, you certainly can do it with some time on YouTube um, and pick that up and we'd be happy to jump on a call and, and walk you through how to use a DSLR or mirrorless camera as well and give you the basics there. Okay, so let's look at some examples of what the cell phone can actually get. This is an image from inside our pool park. We wanted a photograph of the pool tile and in this case it's a spillover from a tanning ledge that we have. So you see this glass tile, this is the spillover from the tanning ledge which is just to the left of the photo and dumping over. But what we did here was we, we simply put the cell phone down super low towards that tile and then we pressed and held the screen so that the phone would focus on that glass tile only. Um, and so that locked in the focus on that particular item allowing the rest of the photograph to look kind of blurry. So it, it gives the appearance that this photo was done from a much more high-end camera when really I pulled it out of my back pocket and I kind of laid down on the, on the pool deck and I snapped this photograph. It took me exactly three seconds to do this. But the image looks really cool. It looks very engaging. It's a great way to show off something like glass tile, the blue water, some blue furniture in the background. And then editing this photo on my phone, and that's the result. So significant capabilities just with your cell phone, uh, bringing all the colors out by um, enriching the photo with the upping the saturation. And that just simply means to enhance the, the colors, the reds, the blues, the greens in a photograph. Um, we added a little more detail to the photograph, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and uh, which made the, the water rippling over the water tiles really, really pop. So Again, we took this photo on cell phone, we edited it on cell phone, and it looks amazing. We use this photo on our website and other places often. This is a photo of one of the guys in the back. We wanted to just have a, a serious look, and, and we asked Blake, that's his name, to give us a serious look because Blake is actually always smiling, and I don't ever see him not smiling, so we said, Blake, don't smile. He had to, he had to work for this, right? So this is a photo done with iPhone's portrait mode, and... Um, once you open up the camera, if you just swipe right and left, you'll see different modes, panorama, portrait, photo, square. Um, there's different options on the iPhone and uh, Google Android devices have that as well. So we shot this using iPhone's portrait mode, which gives us a really crisp image, which is Blake, and then blur it out the background. And then we edited this photo on iPhone as well using the app Snapseed. I, I prefer that app over all others and I'll, I'll cover different editing apps here shortly. 
But again, just another example of how versatile the, the cell phone is in capturing and allowing you to edit images um, you know, on the go, on the fly, instead of having to learn a device like a DSLR camera and then working with software like, um, like Adobe Photoshop and um, Adobe Illustrator, things like that, which certainly have a learning curve to them. I, I love this photo. Just go back and forth. It's such a cool edit. Okay. And so there's the side by side. <laughs> as soon as we snapped the pig, he broke out laughing. It was very apparent. Like he can't keep a straight face. All right. So we talked about the action cam, the GoPro. We talked about the cell phone, the DSLR. Let's talk about price range. So on the GoPro side of things, you're looking at a two to four hundred dollar price range to get the camera itself, and then you should expect to spend another fifty to one hundred dollars just in accessories. I would start with. Um, I would start with a couple extra batteries because GoPro is not known for being able to uh, have a long battery life. Uh, certainly get a SD card that's capable of capturing a lot of information because GoPro shoots in 4K. It shoots in 1080p, so it shoots high-resolution video and, of course, um, pretty good photographs as well. So get, a, get an SD card that is capable of handling that, and you can read those recommendations online when you're shopping. So expect to spend... 250 bucks minimum on the GoPro and then, you know, up to $500 minimum uh, on a GoPro. And then the more accessories you get, the more versatile that camera becomes, the more places you can put it, the more things you can do with it. Everyone's purchased a cell phone, 600 to a thousand bucks. You can't get it for any less than that now if you buy it outright. And of course, everybody's payment plans and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the DSLR cameras, you can get a, um, a really good camera that shoots excellent photographs and excellent video um, with the lens and an SD card and extra batteries for about a thousand bucks. So I think Canon, the Rebel T5, um, you know, something along those lines, um, you can certainly get for a thousand bucks. You can get uh, watch deals through Best Buy or um, BJ's or Costco, something like that. And they offer really good camera packages um, every now and then. If, you're, if you want to get more high-end, um, actually, I wouldn't even say high-end. I would say middle of the range, so which is the camera we have, the Sony, Sony Alpha. And that's what you see here on the screen. That's what we're shooting with now. So the camera itself um, and one or two lenses is going to cost you about um, you know, $3,500, bucks, maybe $4,000 uh, by the time you get a few extra batteries and you know, two extra lenses, perhaps. So anyway, expect to spend money. So the difference between the Sony Alpha and the Canon that you would buy through BJ's is that the Sony, this particular model, has the ability to capture photos in much greater lighting situations or much more varied lighting situations. So it's good at capturing super low light images. Um, you have a lot more flexibility in terms of the depth of color that the, that the camera can capture, allowing you to edit um, a greater flexibility in editing afterward. So, but if you're just starting, you know, certainly the, the lower end DSLRs are perfectly fine. And if you get good at it, no one can tell the difference what camera it was shot on. Nobody can do that. So um, you're perfectly fine to spend a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars. I mean, get whatever camera you can if, if that's something you want to go with. Um, I don't think I'm going to get into lighting in this because we're already 20 minutes in and I really want to show you guys some edits, but just consider uh, the lighting of your images. And let me show you some examples here. First of all, all of these devices can be used to add light to a scene. So the cell phone has a flashlight on the back of it, right? Everybody's probably used that. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. Probably not because it's so bright out here. But um, there are also mini lights that you can add to your cell phone or your DSLR camera to put some more light on the thing you're trying to video or photograph. Um, I used cheap shop lights forever. I still have them. I still use them. And then I use parchment paper to uh, uh, close pin over that just to kind of diffuse the light. So it's not like a, a blaring flashlight on whatever it is. And then deflector so we can deflect light in certain directions. And then of course, everybody's seen studio lights. We actually have one on me right now um, to add a little more light since I'm here in the shade. You know, that sounds odd. I'm outside. It's bright. It's sunny. Um, but we felt like we needed a little more light on me um, just to have it little, look a little better on camera. I need all the help I can get, actually. 
Um, here's an example of a shot a video sequence that Patrick and I did. And we use light just to kind of create the effect that these, these jars are glowing and, um, and cast a little dramatic light onto Patrick. Um, so we'll skip past this. So here's why lighting is important. And we run into this all the time because we're pool people and we have to shoot on the go. We cannot always set up a professional um, you know, photo session. And uh, oftentimes the opportunity is midday when the sun is directly over our heads and it's the harshest. And so you can see that's exactly what's going on here. Jason is giving a tour of the, um, I think that is one of the R series um, or the D series perhaps. Which one? Is that the T40? I don't think it is because the bench looks a little low. Uh, anyway, so Jason's giving a, a tour of one of the pools here. Um, he's sorry he couldn't be here, by the way. He's got something going on. I think he's meeting with some dealers today. And he said, hey, you got this one? I said, yeah, I think I got this topic. Um, so anyway, but while we were shooting this, the only opportunity we had was in the middle of the day. The sun is directly overhead. But it makes, it makes Jason's face look dark. It casts a really harsh shadow on the pool. So it so it's really hard to really understand what this color is. It's, it's, it's the granite gray that we offer. Um, a lot of manufacturers offer a version of this, but as the consumer, it's, it's hard for them to understand what this color looks like because of the harsh lighting. And so that's why it's important to use things like those studio lights or shade to create some shade over this so that the lighting looks consistent when we're shooting. We just didn't have the ability this, this particular day. Um, here's an example of shooting at dusk. So there, um, you may or may not have heard of the golden hour, uh, in terms of videography and photography. And so that's the, that's the hour right after the sun has risen and the hour right before the sun sets when the sunlight is just kind of golden and there are no, sh there are very few shadows and the light is very evenly distributed. And so this video was shot going into the golden hour, um, here at the pool. This was a, an outro on a video we shot a while back. All right, so let's talk about stability. If we're shooting video clips, how do we not get those jarring images? And so uh, we're looking at steady cams. And really, the steady cam, what is providing that ability is the gimbal, something that can move in either two or on two or three axes and provide some stability. What's really coming along is the fact that um, action cameras like GoPro and the one that DJI has put out have digital stability built into them, and it is phenomenal. It's as if you're working, as if that camera is on a gimbal itself, but it's all done digitally inside the camera, and the result is just astounding, almost making the GoPro a blog or vlog-worthy camera being held out here so you could walk around all you want and the camera's not going to jitter and shake because it inside is taking all of that out, giving a very smooth video clip for, uh, for the viewer to have a pleasurable viewing experience. Um, so, but, so there's different, there's different devices out here. So you've got the action camera, the, the GoPro, which has it built in, but then everything out here works on a three axis gimbal or two axis in the case of the DJI Go, I think it's called. Um, but the, the Osmo Mobile has a three-axis gimbal, um, and so this is about 200 bucks. You can pick this up. So this is great for walking around getting video clips of the job site, very smooth footage. You capture it on your phone, super easy. Um, this is the Osmo Plus, um, which has a camera built in. Of course, you can, attach, you can buy one for your uh, DSLR or mirrorless camera, but you're looking at a price point of probably 750 bucks once you get to here. You're looking around 400 bucks here and 150 bucks for the DJI for the Osmo Mobile, um, and then drone shots. Everybody knows about drones. Everybody thinks drones are cool, and that's because they can capture amazing images of job sites, both video and photography. Um, so this is the Phantom uh, Pro, the Mavic. This is the Mavic, um, and that's what we shoot with. Um, there are newer versions of the Mavic out. I would suggest highly that if there were two devices for you to get, one would be your cell phone to start doing photo and video, and the second would be 
probably the drone because it's so versatile because you can get vantage points of your job sites and produce photos that are just mind boggling sometimes. And you get different angles that you just cannot get with a handheld device and their stabilization built in on the, the, they have gimbals on them so that your video footage is super smooth. Um, I'm going to skip past a couple of examples of steady shot shot on the Sony. And uh, iPhone, all these devices do pretty good at some stabilization. And then, of course, you add a gimbal, and, and it just gets to be buttery smooth. Audio is another uh, important thing to consider. But cell phones these days capture pretty good audio. You can, um, you can invest about 100 bucks, 200 bucks, and you can add a microphone, external microphone, to your cell phone and get phenomenal audio. Um, I think this device right here um, is made by Rode. Um, I just don't remember the name of this one, but it, it plugs straight into your cell phone and it's a phenomenal device. Uh, the Rode VideoMic Go um, is another good device, but you need to account for how you're going to mount that to your camera. So you're gonna have to buy a little case for your camera to mount that and then a special cable adapter. And then you go on up, this will be for more like DSLR cameras, um, which we have right now and then your wireless microphones. Um, so on the wireless microphone side, you start have to worry about capturing the audio separate from the video and then get things synced. Um, and this gets more tricky. So, you know, getting a microphone attached to your cell phone for about a hundred bucks gets really good audio, especially if you're talking on camera or you just want to capture a scene and you can do it cheaply. A couple accessories that we use for the GoPro. Um, this guy right here, it's just the pole mount accessory. So we, we strap that to a, a skimmer pole all the time and just allows us to reach the camera or put the camera underwater without us having to get wet. Super handy device, 20 bucks. Um, this is the Joby Gorilla Pod, and we use this for all cameras. We put a uh, cell phone mount on there, which is seven bucks on Amazon. We mount the DSLR camera to this, which allows us to be versatile and shoot in a number of different places and situations. And... Um, we shoot with this uh, device a number of times. <laughs> we got some people just kind of rubber necking over here. It's funny driving by. So that's a super handy device. The ball mount. Um, we strap this guy to a magnet and then uh, hook the GoPro to this. And then we can, we can unscrew this knob right here and turn the GoPro in any direction we want. So a ball mount, I think it's 25 bucks and it's really handy to have your traditional tripod. And then we also use a slider. Just this gives us more unique shots when we are shooting highlight reels of pools. This would certainly be something for your more advanced setup. Um, but nonetheless, just wanted to make you aware of it. All right, so my go-to devices, tips and tricks. Um, I'd say the biggest tip and trick, if you're gonna go with a drone, um, is to go slow and steady when you're shooting the video. The slower that drone is moving, the more steady your shot will be. Pools are not very long. I mean, 40 feet, right, is the length of a, of a, of a pretty good-sized pool. And so you're not having to go very far. And the more, the more slowly and steady you can create that shot, the more cinematic it will look. And so just take your time. And just get very slow shots, and it'll look phenomenal at the end trying to watch my time here so we're at 30 minutes so far now we're going to now that you understand the gear and what's what the gear is capable of doing and maybe have an idea about what you should invest in gear wise let's talk about the uh, the process of actually framing the photograph and getting it taken so if you think in thirds right and a lot of cameras allow you to turn this grid on inside your camera so if you're looking into your cell phone, you can actually choose the option to turn the grid on so that you can see what is in each one of these squares. And so let me explain what I mean here. So this photograph looks, looks pretty good. Um, it's a pool house. There's a, there's a waterfall coming off of the pergola. Um, and then we've got a tanning ledge here with a spillover. We've got some bulbers. We've got a really a lot of stuff going on here, a very cool job but it looks kind of like it's maybe shifted to the left or something is just 
slightly off. It's a good image, but if you looked at it for a second, it just looks kind of out of whack. And so here's why. So the tanning ledge itself is not centered in this, in this square right here. The, uh, the pool house is not centered, it's not evenly distributed across these three squares up top. And so if we had the photograph shifted, if we panned the camera or, or we went slightly to the left on this one and brought it all in line, it would make that photograph look that much better. So for just a couple seconds worth of effort um, to do this, and I, I grabbed this still shot out of the, uh, a throwaway shot that we did for this pool project, uh, this video project, just to be able to demonstrate how important it is to think in the rule of thirds when you're shooting video and shooting photography. So let's take a look at this with the video running. So the video is running now. We're going to start to bring the drone forward slow and steady, but it just, it continues to be a little off. And so it just, it would look phenomenal if we had gotten that thing dead center on the, with the rule of thirds. And so now you see that the pergola reached the left side of the screen before the right side of the screen. So it's just little things, little things. Uh, so this photo is pretty well centered. It looks really, really good. Um, we are focusing in on the, the waterfall on the left-hand side. And we've got the entire center of the screen um, is filled with that, um, with that hardscape feature. And so the eye just kind of follows along the middle of the screen there, which looks great. Again, same pool, different time of day, but your eye kind of follows along the middle three thirds, the center of the screen here, okay? And so it really makes this photograph work really well. The pergola feature fills up these three, the left three thirds, the, the left third of the screen. And so it looks phenomenal. And the, um, the tanning ledge itself is on the middle third on the right side. So this photograph is very well balanced uh, in terms of the rule of thirds. Uh, this image uh, again works because the tanning ledge fills up the middle, uh, the middle third of the screen. All right. So uh, this guy, the umbrella, you'll see in a second, is slightly askew, but you're never gonna notice this because the chairs are so balanced. And so it just brings your eyes straight to that table and everything just, just works in this photograph. It's as if you're about to walk out of this pool house, sit down in one of these chairs and think about the guests are coming later and we're gonna have dinner at that table. This photo, I just love it. And there it is. It's just so well balanced uh, the way it's, it's built out and it just draws your attention straight through the pool on this bottom third, bottom center third right up the middle to that table and your eyes just focus in on everything that is there at some point. Um, and then of course that, that ray of sunlight there um, at the end of the day, it just really makes this photograph set. We're gonna edit this photo as I mentioned here in just a minute. Rule of thirds again, on this photo I showed you earlier, the glass tile is the focal point of this photograph. All right, so um, what, what makes this image work really well is that the rule of thirds is in play, that these, these three thirds right here are what, um, is, are what is focused on. And so your, your eye is drawn to um, these three squares right here. And so we've got a third of the photograph is filled up with the focal point of where we wanna draw the attention. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So let's get into the editing side. Uh, so I first started editing um, and I prefer to edit um, just on the go. I don't have patience to sit down in front of a computer and edit, but um, I learned to edit on the go. And so there's several apps that you can do from your phone. Uh, my favorite is Snapseed and that's this one over here. Uh, you can get these through Google Play Store and the, um, and the iPhone store. Apple Store, right? Uh, and then also on Apple, it has a really good editing app right inside the photograph. So you open a photo up, you have the option to edit right there, and you have a lot of capability um, to edit right with inside the Apple Photo app. Um, of course, there's Lightroom, which is Adobe's product. There's Photoshop Mobile, which is Adobe's product. Lightroom is a fancier version of Snapseed. Uh, I prefer Snapseed because it's free. 
and I don't have to pay a subscription for a mobile service like Lightroom. Photoshop, again, is also subscription-based. And then um, this one over here on the right is called DSCO, I believe. And um, it's okay. It does, it does pretty well. I just prefer Snapseed because, it, um, because it's free and it's very intuitive and easy to use. So let's take a look at what it's like to edit this, um, edit this photograph, which we just saw inside Snapseed. Now this is gonna blow your mind. I did a screen recording and so we opened the photo up and we first are going to assess the details. Or I'm sorry, we're gonna crop the image to get a lot of that stuff out. We don't wanna have too much of the doorway in the image because we want the focus to be on the pool itself. Um, there we go, Patrick, back up again. We are then gonna go and mess with the detail of it. We're gonna sharpen it, we're gonna add a little structure. And so this brings a little sharpness to, to the lines and the details. So important for the lines on the pool decking to bring out the texture there and in the leaves a little bit. Now we're gonna go and start messing with the color a little bit. We're gonna adjust the brightness to bring that up. We are going to um, bring a little more contrast between the light and dark colors of the image. We're gonna bring the saturation up so that the greens pop a little bit more and the blues pop. We're gonna take the ambiance and mess with that a little bit. And so that draws a little more attention to the color. We're gonna drop the shadows down so they are darker um, and a little more contrasting to everything else in the photograph. And because it's summertime, we're going to, or actually this photo I think was taken yeah, late summer. So we're going to take the, the warmth and we're going to bump that up so it gives it more of an orange look. And um, it gives it that, that summertime look. We're now going to add a little vignette, meaning we're going to darken the outside perimeter of this photograph and brighten the inside a little. So you can see that happening right there just a little bit that the outside areas are getting darker, the inside is getting a little bit brighter. I think I back off the darkness on the outside just a little bit. This is a really subtle technique to use on photo editing. I'm not claiming to be a pro um, at editing photography, but it, it just helps bring the focal point just and dial that right in. And then we're also going to um, enhance the lens blur. We're gonna add that effect. This is all, again, free inside the Snapseed app. And so there's the original photo and there's the finished photo. Phenomenal. Done right inside the mobile app. Took about two minutes to do that. We're gonna save the image, ready to go. And now it's, it's ready to be posted on the front page of our website. That image is quality enough to be on the front page of our website. And it was for quite a while. And it will be again at some point, but just a beautiful image. Uh, which this one could be captured on mobile. We did take this one on a DSLR camera, uh, but it can be edited on mobile, which we just saw on a free app. So Snapseed, Snapseed, Snapseed. Write that down, go download that now. Okay. So again, just a little contrast to compare the original photo to the finished photo. All right. All right, so on the video editing side, and we've got, um, I've got about 10 more minutes if we can run through that with you guys. On the video editing side, um, free apps like Splice from GoPro are very easy to use. And you've got a range of capabilities in here. It's not that difficult to learn. You can probably sit down for 30 minutes one evening and kind of figure this app out. And certainly there are YouTube tutorials on it. Um, there is Pixaloop. And so Pixaloop, Let's see if this plays. Yeah, if you, if you can notice just a little bit, there's some slight movement here at the end of the chop gun. And so this is a still photograph, but we use this app, Pixaloop, to create some movement right here. What do they call this, Patrick, where you have movement inside a photograph? There's a term for it, I can't remember. Um, but anyway, this was done very easily um, within an app. So picture an image of you know, the, the pool is installed in the ground and, and, the, and the water delivery truck has arrived and it's spraying water into the truck and, you, and you, snap a, you snap a photo, but you want to add some movement to that water. It just gives it a really engaging look um, that'll do really well on social media. On the video editing side, more high-end if you're going to edit from a laptop, 
Uh, first of all, if you're going to get into video editing on a laptop, so something more than a minute long that you can do on mobile, um, I would not expect to spend less than twelve to fifteen hundred bucks on a PC, and twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred on a Mac. So just know that you're going to have to spend the money on the hardware to be able to carry and manage. That was a loud truck. To to handle and manage the um, the the software and manage all the footage as it comes in. But on the Mac side. Uh, we have Final Cut Pro. Uh, Lightworks works on both Mac and PC, I believe. And then Premiere Pro, which is an Adobe product, uh, works both Mac and PC, although uh, some critics say it leans a little better on the PC side. Um, so anyway, Final Cut Pro only works on Mac. Lightworks works on both. And Premiere Pro, which is an Adobe product, works on both. The first two, Final Cut, Lightworks, are purchased software, so it's a one-time purchase. And then Adobe, all Adobe products are subscription-based. Um, and I think Premiere is about 20 bucks a month. All right, and here's just a quick clip of a video. This is the intro sequence for Two Minutes in the Pool. And so this is a screen recording of Patrick editing a 10, how long is that, Patrick? 10 seconds, about 10 seconds long? Oh, 16 seconds. So this took him about... So I don't know, 20 minutes to, to recreate this intro sequence. Um, and you can just kind of see a little bit of the inner workings of an edit process um, in Premiere Pro. So lots of tools on screen at one point. This software, it has a learning curve. I'm not as proficient in it as I am in Final Cut Pro. Patrick is more proficient in this than he is in Final Cut Pro right now. So our, our, our skill sets kind of, um, kind of work well with each other. But you can just get a taste for what it's like to edit video on a computer-based, um, desktop-based, or laptop uh, software. Okay. And here's the finished product, which uh, I hope everybody has seen by now. And if not, go check out our YouTube series, Two Minutes in the Pool. Check out our channel. Feel free to use any and all of that content to help you with selling pools, to help educate your customers. We all know that an educated customer um, is a happy customer. Uh, they feel empowered when it comes time to make decisions and get the contract signed and get things moving forward. So feel free to do that. Use our content. All right. So you've taken these photos. You've got these videos. What are we going to do with them after the fact? Well, we're going to share them uh, on social media. So we've got Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, House, Twitter, and then Google Plus is dead now. Um, it's not really a viable social media app anymore. We focus a lot of our work here on Facebook and Instagram. Um, actually a bulk of our leads are generated based off of YouTube videos and then, um, but not from YouTube platforms. So we educate them using YouTube as the host for our videos, but they view the videos through our website. The one app that does produce more leads than everything else combined, if you just look at the social platform itself is Pinterest and uh, Pinterest sends us leads all the time. People are just window shopping. They're putting together ideas for their backyard. So a very powerful tool. And of course, um, House is a, is a powerful tool as well. We don't do a whole lot here. We know that other pool builders have a lot of success on House. Now you have uh, information on how to take better photos and better images to post onto House. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look at some examples, things that work on social media and, and why. So this image was of a job site and um, this house is under construction. But what's just so unique here is that this crane has to reach so dang far to put this pool in the ground. And I just thought that's a cool looking photo is the dead of winter. There's no, it just looks kind of dark and barren and um, you know, it's it just, it just a lot of browns and earth tones in this photograph. And so we, we took this picture and we use it in our office even to help educate customers about the, the building process. Um, but taken with a drone, right? We took this photograph with a drone and we got pretty good, um, we got pretty good reactions from it. So it reached 30, you know, 1300 people, um, 241 post clicks, just got good engagement all around. Um, you know, what else adds to the photograph, the success of the post is people. And so if you can have people in the image and there appears to be a story behind that, they will click and they will want to learn more. And so in this case, we were kind of given a little virtual pat on the back to 
uh, one of our dealers up in Delaware, Clean Cut Pavers and Pools. And so um, this is us, us with the guys and um, at a job site. This is um, actually Joe Biden's pool. Like him or hate him. Anyway, that, that's who's pool we were putting in the background. Um, you can see we shot a number of videos there. And Rich and his crew did um, did a phenomenal job. That's Rich in the center, and then Doug um, Arcos, Doug Arcos. I always want to say Acros, but it's Arcos. Uh, so Doug Doug runs the sales division for uh, for their pool installation side of the company, and then of course Rich and his wife Jennifer own the company Clean Cut Pavers and Pools. Good bunch of guys up there, and gals. Uh, so because this photo ha had people at a job site, there's something just kind of interesting enough that made this photograph engaging. Of course, who wouldn't want to, you know, envision themselves dreaming about sitting at a pool in their backyard. Um, and literally, you know, when this photo was taken, they had Jimmy Buffett going and it was just a fun atmosphere to go shoot photographs and video at that day. They had red, white, and blue kind of decked out everywhere. It was a little bit before the 4th of July, and it was just fun. So this photo works because it just looks like a really fun backyard to host a good fun party in. Uh, this image, again, with the people. And so um, you can notice the gentleman in the center here, Mr. Porta, and uh, he's a Marine veteran, Lance Corporal Ronnie Porta, um, who was injured while serving in Iraq. And um, his story was amazing. I, I had to remind myself that I was there to get photographs, and I got so caught up talking to him and just listening to his, um, listening to his stories and his passion for um, his brothers in the, Marine, in the Marines and his service to the country. Um, a phenomenal guy. But anyway, we, we got the honor to put a pool in for him, and so to help tell that story, um, every single one of us, we were proud to be there that day. And you know, the photo was just very engaging, um, and it's because of the people, because of the story behind it. One of our most successful posts to date um, was a video I shot and produced back in 2017, and it was just a highlight reel from our Christmas party, kind of summing up the year. And, I mean, we reached 7,500 people. This video got 5,000 views um, when I took this screenshot, and so um, this thing had a lot of positive engagement. And so although we're not highlighting pools, we're highlighting what the personality of our company is. So we're very close with each other. We support each other. We enjoy spending time with each other and our families. We come together several times throughout the year. And so it's important to tell those stories too in your photos and your videos. So this is us getting together a local restaurant for our end of year Christmas dinner. Um, and it was just we got good results on social media. Um, minutes. This thing was seen at the time when I got the screenshot, 2,000 minutes. But it also, if you start to look down at, at the attention span on social media, three-second views, I got 5,000. Ten-second views, 2,400. But here's the average watch time on this video, 10 seconds. 10 seconds long. So if you go to a photo and video for social media, you literally have less than a second to catch someone's attention. And you essentially have to buy your way up in the attention span. So you have less than a second to earn three seconds. And then you have three seconds to earn a few more seconds. You don't have a whole lot of time to get attention on social media. And this is part of that puzzle. First, the photo's got to be engaging. But then how much room do you take up on the screen when it comes to making those posts? Is your photo square? Does it take up a little more of the screen by uh, four by five? There are the ratios two by three and then nine by 16 over here on the right. So think about that. The more, uh, the more space you can take up on the newsfeed and Facebook, right? The longer they have to spend to, to thumb scroll past your post, so the more likely they are to engage with it and pause for a moment. Um, and so Facebook actually counts. If someone pauses on your image for just a second, they're gonna count that as a view. And so you wanna think about how you want to post the image and the format you wanna post in. Guys, I've gone about five minutes over. Um, there's some example pics there. The same image uh, posted in several different versions, different layouts. You can see they take up more room as we go further across. Um, so we're about five minutes over. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up here. And just by saying that at the end of the day, there is no 
there is no secret to killing it on social media. There is no secret to crushing it with photographs and with photography and videography for your company because the world record, I assume it's still the world record um, on Instagram for the most liked image is a brown egg. And at the time I took this screenshot, it had 50 million likes. It's a brown egg. It's a white background. I don't know if that egg is hard boiled. I don't know if there's a chicken inside of it. It's just a brown egg, folks. So uh, you never know what's going to go viral, and you never know how far your photographs will go, how much influence they will have on the buyer and the purchasing process. So the important thing is to get out there, start snapping pictures, start getting video, and, um, and start putting it out there to get your, get your company online in good light and building trust with consumers. Christian with River Pools, our next – session is going to be august 14th we usually do the first wednesday of the month but i'm not going to be in town hey there's some more folks driving by <laughs> and um but it'll be august 14th at 11 a.m and jason and i uh, are going to go over how to install waterline tile some of you may know some of you may know a little bit but um it's certainly something that can make or break the job and it's certainly something that uh, down the line can either produce problems for you or continue to provide enjoyment for, uh, for the homeowner for years to come. So we're going to cover that in our next session. Make sure you get signed up. We'll see you guys then. Take it easy.